the drive, the determination, the will to succeed. There's just a lot that everyone gets from sports that just isn't matched by anything else. Hi, my name is Kim Adabon Lewis. I am from St. Croix, U.S. Virgin Islands originally. I currently live in Coral Springs, Florida, and I'm a marine biologist. Taught dance two or three times a week, played tennis six times a week, found time to work. Fast forward to 2019, and that's where the drama began. An original bacterial infection developed into septic shock, and it started to shut down all of my organs. And I woke up after a two-week coma and learned that I was going to become a quadrupal amputee. So there's a, a few days that were tough um, coming out of the coma, coming out of four amputations. But there were very few days and they're so far behind me. Um, the things that I've been able to do since, scuba diving again, teaching dance again, playing tennis again, picking up pickleball, there really isn't a limit to what the human body can do when the human mind is in the right frame. I'd like to think that a part of my resilience and my drive to bounce back also comes from the fact that I'm a tennis player. We're really excited about what we can do at Wilson to help Kenneth play better pickleball, which is a, a more recent sport for him, and then um, continue to play tennis, which is the game he loves. This has all been like a blur, a whirlwind, and I think I'm awake, but sometimes it feels like a dream. The idea that the same company and the professionals, the engineer that builds rackets for professional tennis players are with the same energy focused on creating tools that will work for me is really amazing. Welcome! How are you? Well, everyone's really excited to meet you. I've never seen the Innovation Center so full before. <laughs> We're at the Innovation Center here in Schiller Park, Illinois. It's a suburb of Chicago. This is where all of our engineers work for all sports. We've got racket, team sports, and golf here. This is where we design all of our equipment and we come up with the latest and greatest technologies to give all of our athletes the edge over the competition. Thanks, Kim. We're very glad to have you here. We just wanted to check out your equipment, see um, what things you're looking for as far as improvements, how we can improve your experience. Some say I hit the ball too hard, but <laughs> one of the main issues with both pickleball and tennis rackets is that in them putting the connector in, they hollow out the racket and so it's weaker. I've had pickleball pedals break at least six times last year. Do you mind if we like touch it and check yeah, it out? Yeah, for sure. Because uh, I'm, I'm interested in, like you said, if they're hollowing it out, right. how much is going on underneath it. Man, that is yeah. definitely heavy. Yeah, where's it breaking? The first time it broke, it was the entire grip. Okay. And so there was wood pieces all over the pickleball court. <laughs> um, and <laughs> so they firmed it up, and then the second time, it's where the paddle met the grip. Every paddle in the market, this is a natural weak point. Mm -hmm. And this, this is super heavy. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're really stressing it. Obviously, you can add a whole bunch of mass to this and make it be super strong, but that's not gonna do him any good on the court. We wanna make this as light and strong of a solution as possible. The best thing that I can do is to give him a piece of equipment where he can take his focus off of if it's gonna perform well and focus on his game. It's a completely different thing going in a store and buying a racket or a pedal versus walking through the lab and seeing exactly how they're created and built. Oh, here we go. We got uh, some pickleball paddles <laughs> being cut. Hey, what's up, Eric? Hello, how are you guys doing? How, how you doing, doing man? Good. Hey, you mind? Uh, it looks like you got the routing table set up. Can you get them? Sure can we get some cutting? Up? Yeah, I think we might as well. Pickleball paddles are made from the polypropylene honeycomb, right, with fiberglass. Right. So whenever we're prototyping, we'll get them as a big sheet. Once the paddles are cut to the net shape, they're going to look something like this, um, and then we put them on our UV printer. So that's printing out the final design. We can do prototypes, we can do one-offs. 
I'm sure that whenever your paddle's ready, we're gonna get you something custom, at least your name, maybe a cool nice. design, something <laughs> like that. Then we use some of these fixtures to apply the edge guards. Mm -hmm. And then the finishing step is adding the wood handle pallets mm -hmm. and then gripping the pots. I'm not an engineer, but I was totally geeking out. The scientist in me was like, oh my gosh, this is a cool place. This is our collision lab. This is where we're testing a lot of our products. This one is for string durability. So a cannon will be firing at the racket. It flips on each side and we see how many cycles it lasts. This is our COR machine. It's measuring the coefficient of restitution. And then we have a similar setup for pickleball. These light gates are what's measuring the velocity inbound and outbound. We know that off-center hits are always a challenge for pickleball paddles. So this is how we can measure the performance of that. This is our fatigue tester. So whenever we're developing the paddle for you, this is something that we will be utilizing and make sure that when we're testing, that we're getting the increased durability that we're looking for. Nice. Yeah, more than two weeks would be great. More than two <laughs> weeks, yeah, that's definitely the goal. I'm fortunate that I was super active before. And so the idea of me accepting a no and not doing those things that I love just wasn't an option for me. Come on, man, what is that? What is that? <laughs> oh, nice boy. I know I'm not going to get back to 100%. I've come to peace with that, but if I can get to 98%, let's get, let's get there. Innovation is so important. I think the exercise that we're going through with Kemet now is, A, his enthusiasm is going to lend itself to a lot of great solutions. Those solutions, ideally, can be applied to a ton of different people who have similar challenges. We can provide products for them, but we can also provide optimism and hope. I'm excited about the doors that this technology can open for others. Back in Florida, I do a fair bit of advocacy with the prosthetic company that I'm with to get individuals back to doing the things that they like to do. It's not just tennis or pickleball, but everyday things. My new motto is, you know, give the energy out there that you want to receive. And it's definitely come back to me quite a bit. And I'm sitting here with you guys today, so. I will continue to play this sport called tennis that brings me like the most joy in the world.